Welcome to this microlearning session by Nurse and Education Network. This presentation is all around formative and summative assessment. Key learning outcomes are to provide an overview of formative and summative assessment, discuss some of the key concepts, and also relate these into the healthcare situation. How we make learning visible as educators and share some of the key learning resources. So assessment needs to be authentic and it requires ongoing development and the need for a process of feedback. Now differentiating the formative and summative is formative is the assessment for learning. It's monitoring the student's learning and progress. Summative is the end product. It's the assessment of learning, where we're evaluating what students have learned through that journey. And assessments provide an opportunity for not only self-assessment, but constructive feedback as well. How you choose the assessment depends on the topic, resources, what it needs to be assessed, and check out our presentation on forms of assessment as well. Now let's move out of health education for a minute and into the school education setting. Educationists such as John Hattie, Dylan Williams, really, education theory, assessment, and developing learning, this making learning visible. And some key concepts here that teachers need to provide effective individualistic feedback for the learner to understand the areas that they need to develop and progress in. Both the student and teacher need to know and understand the learning intentions. So the teacher needs to be engaged and understand the topic, the focus of the subject, but those intended learning outcomes need to be clear, explicit for the learner to understand and to focus on what is the expectation for the program. So these intended learning outcomes are not to just sit for accreditation or for a formal review, they're intended for the learner. Other aspects really to look at for the learner is and to consider is where is the learner going as part of this formative assessment and feedback where the learner is right now again that individualistic approach and to give the tools as the teacher the tutor the supervisor for the learner of how to get there how to get and achieve those learning intentions. So if we look at the formative and summative assessment in healthcare, we can relate all our progress, our development in terms of the taxonomy of learning, linking them to the intended learning outcomes and that novice to expert paradigm. So depending on the expected level of training, education, knowledge in that nurse or healthcare professional's journey can link the formative and summative assessments at the appropriate time. Commonly throughout the journey, we'll use self-reflection, learning from events, experiential learning, what went on, what could be done different, and building on that past knowledge and constructing, developing the critical appraisal skills aspects as well. In the clinical environment, we provide supervisors again to assist in that learning, the process in the healthcare setting, this simulation, understanding the teamwork, communication aspects, but that clinical supervision, commonly there'll be an appraisal aspect through that hands-on component. And it's trying to provide a set time of when the formative assessment occurs. 
the healthcare person would need, the student would need time to settle into the environment, see and experience and engage in activities in the clinical workplace. So it needs to be an appropriate time in that clinical placement. So it's not too early, but also importantly, not too late where if there's areas of development, then there needs to be appropriate time for that person to change and develop and meet those expectations. Throughout clinical supervision as well, a key factor will be constructive feedback. So it needs to be individualistic. So again, matching in terms of clinical supervision through mentors or supervisors and trying to be consistent from there. That helps again, that consistency and awareness of a person or the student's development throughout the time of their clinical placement. But that really is vital is that constructive feedback. And again, for the supervisors, the mentors, they need to understand their intended learning outcomes for that student, nurse or healthcare professional. Here are some key references from this presentation. Please visit us at Nursing Education Network blog for more nursing and healthcare education theory.